Disclaimer. The views and opinions expressed in Radio DMG may or may not be the views and opinions of the DMGI's family of sites. All music used in this podcast is the property of whoever made it, and no copyright infringement is intended. God bless this albatross, and hold on tight for the awesome you are about to receive. Scott the Peter King. Welcome to another special edition of Radio DMG. I am your host, Philip Wesley. Today, our broadcast is not safe for work. This is a recording of the final performance of Chris Patton's Shares Too Much. This was recorded at Nondescon 2010, and we thank them for the opportunity to present this show to you in its entirety, and without any cuts or edits. Because of the nature of this show... We have placed a not safe for work graphic on our page and we advise that anyone who may be easily offended leave the room screaming with their fingers in their ears. This inappropriate broadcast is not intended for ears under the age of 17 without prior adult consultation. If you are over the age of 17 and wish to hear onward, please relax, remove all your clothes, and prepare to take this broadcast inside of your mind. For more information on Chris Patton and on Descon, please consult the show notes provided on the site. Thank you and enjoy this episode of Radio DMG. Yeah. Hello, Indy K. How are you tonight? You bitches almost filled up 2,000 seats! Do not put this on YouTube. I am a teacher now. But there is someone here that can get away with it, and that's why you came here tonight, and that is Chris Patton. Yeah! This is his fourth Shares Too Much panel, and it started off in an itty bitty room, and then we moved to Aspen, and then Aspen got overloaded, and now we're in main events. Or should I say, he's in main events, and I'm here with him in sort of spirit. I am coherent this year. She wants to be proud of. Thank you, 12 Steps. So anyway, um, I am so glad all of you are here tonight. I've known Chris for a very long time. We've loved this con together. Uh, Chris has been to 71 conventions throughout the world. Yeah, and I can think I can say that this is for him, that this is his favorite. And and that he loves you all very, very much. He's been doing this since 2002. Yeah, so that's a long time to be doing conventions. Uh, shut up, Chris. He's been doing this since 2002, and uh, this is his last convention, and this will be his last Shares Too Much panel. So, uh, boo hiss. Uh, so, enjoy it, have a great time. Uh, one of my dearest friends in the world, uh, welcome everybody, Chris Patton! Okay, so, shut the fuck up. All right, so first off, like, let's break this down to reality, and I, I want to say, like, what is Chris Patton Shares Too Much all about? Really, when you break it down, 
It's uh, about um, you listening to a tall, blonde, Norwegian-looking homosexual talking about his danger. So, I'm just saying. Uh, it's also, I like to think of it as the uh, antidote to Glenn Beck's August 28th speech. <laughs> Sorry, I got, you got political really fast. Oh, fuck. All right. So, um, the whole point of this panel is, how many of you have seen this panel before? Okay, so those of you who haven't, you're in the fucking dark. Too bad. Um, no, but really, like, the whole point of this panel is, um, you get to ask me whatever you want. It's like what you were always afraid to ask a homosexual voice actor, you know. Uh, but now you have the chance to, and you can ask me whatever you want, and I'll answer you with complete candor and honesty. Um, and that's really it. The way, do you want to hear about how it got started and all that shit, or no? Okay. It was three years ago, and I got invited to NDK for my second time, and they were like, um, they contacted me, and they were like, would you like to attend? And I said, fuck yeah, because I like this con a lot. I had been once when it was in its old location, and I even still like the con. Um, but, uh, uh, so they said, that's cool, but uh, the guest relations person wrote me back, and she said, Chris, um, I want to I wanna talk to you about something. A lot of the voice actors are doing they're sort of specialty panels, you know, like like mythology in anime, or the occult in anime, or uh, sexuality in anime, or my ego in anime, or <laughs> my penis in anime. <laughs> We'd like for you to do something beyond the regular VA Q&A. Um, and I was like, shit, okay. Um, I was like, let me get back to you. So I started thinking about it, and I started like combing through like old email and mice, remember MySpace? Remember that place? Yeah, um, remember? I know it's ghetto now, ghetto as hell, who cares? Uh, so I started coming through old MySpace messages that people had written me about just my regular, my regular Q&A VA panels, which I guess weren't good enough for NDK. <laughs> I'm just kidding, I love you guys. Um, and so, I, but, but something, something did keep recurring. And, and they were like, oh, we, um, the best thing about your panel wasn't so much hearing about voice acting, blah, 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 that was cool, but I love how fucking honest you are and open you are and how blunt you are and there's no pretense and it's all you, it's the real you, blah, blah, blah. And I'm like, holy shit. <laughs> so, I, uh, the pink light bulb went off. And um, that was a gay joke. <laughs> I can tell those because I suck dick. All right. Uh, oh, 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 shit. Oh, shit. Okay. So, <laughs> okay. So I said, I wrote back and I said, hey, what if I did a panel where you could, you could make it 18 and up and do it late at night and it could be called like TMI with Chris Patton or Chris Patton shares too much or Chris Patton won't shut his fucking mouth, something like that. <laughs> and basically the premise would be that they could ask whatever you would be, no holds barred, everything's on the table, nothing's taboo. Whatever. And like in five minutes, she's like, oh, that's brilliant. I love it. And we tried it out. And so how many of you were here for the first one? Yeah. Yeah. yeah that one got pretty, that one got dicey. But it was good, right? It was fun. So, and then uh, it was, so it was kind of a big success. And I ended up doing it at conventions like all over the place. I even did it for the, the crazy Canadians with their maple syrup and their free health care. And like, and I did it for the English and they actually got it. They laughed. And, um, <laughs> Uh, but uh, so it's been a lot of fun and it's been a great ride, giggity. And um, I'm glad I, I wanted, to, I wouldn't have closed it out like anywhere but here. I love this place. It's not bullshit, lip service, whatever. I really love this con and I love the energy here. I love the attendees here. It's, it's great. Like fans here are so fucking respectful. Usually, don't fuck it up tonight. Um, <laughs> usually, usually very respectful. Uh, and I, I really do. I love this event. So I'm glad I'm getting to sort of close this out here tonight. I, I don't think that was sincere, but that's all right. That's all right. I love you anyway. No, so that's how it got started. So really, that's it. And, and beyond that, I mean, it's all up to you guys in the sense that we have a microphone down in front. And if you would like to come up here and ask a question. And you can't, by the way, don't feel like you have to ask about caca poo poo doo doo 
Kunberger, whatever. It, it doesn't have to be that. It, it doesn't have to be about sex or, or vulgarity or toilet humor, although that's fun. But, I mean, it can be about acting or voice acting or, you know, greed, whatever. So, oh, wait, 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 by the way, do I need to introduce myself to anyone here? Are any of you, like, going, who the fuck is this guy? Any, a few of you? Yeah, yeah. They're like, uh, my friends drug me here, and I'm like, who the fuck are you? Right? Okay, so... I'm a voice actor. I've voice acted in anime now for about 11 years for ADV Films and Funimation Entertainment, and I've been in shows like Full Metal Alchemist and Full Metal Panic and Giver and Pre-Tier and Super Gals and, and, and Razafon and um, uh, a whole bunch of motherfucking anime. And um, <laughs> it's been really cool. So anyway, uh, that's it. That's who I am. That's what I'm going to do. And now, now, dear people, come up and, and ask me whatever you want. Wow, there's a brave young lady already. Or it could be a guy, as far as I know, from here. Uh, what, uh, you just cock-blocked her. Hold on. You, you'll go second. You'll go second. You'll go second. Second. No, two. Two. So you're first. See, now that other girl's going to beat me up later. It's going to be awesome. Right. Yes. Start this off with one relatively innocent question. Relatively innocent question. Mr. Patton, show us your war face. <laughs> it's, okay, wait, 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 wait. Is this like one of those dumbass 4chan things? I was like, or is that an honest question? I don't know. Show us your war face? You mean, does that mean like when I'm fucking? Because that's usually like, yes, I'm fucking, yes! Is that not what it means? Do you mean war, like shock and awe? Like, what, war face? <laughs> okay. Okay, there. No, you'll see it later. If someone's gonna ask the wrong question, I'm gonna get pissed, and you'll see my war face. Not really. Go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. Sorry I had to put you in number two, but you're just as important. Go ahead. It's because I'm white, isn't it? Um... It's totally... <laughs> I am racist against my own people. Bunch of fucking no. crackers that we are. Yeah. All right. Yeah. You white people, anyway. Ugh, um, white people. Anyway, my question is probably, is, you know, gutter and lovely. I love the gutter. Of all of the male voice actors that you have heard or have watched or have even worked with, who would you bang? Okay, I need to clarify something first. My boyfriend's in the front row. Uh, so, uh, um, oh God. Uh, okay, if your boyfriend, you know, suddenly kicked the bucket, not that we want to wish that No, him. we don't. No, we don't no, want that. No wishing death on him at all. But like, say that you were having, I don't know, like, like you were just all. Let's there. say I was single. Is that yeah, what you're let's saying? Say that you were single. Yeah. And like, and let's oh. say it was four months ago, <laughs> and I was single and lonely and on Gay.com, <laughs> going, going, where's the good dick at? Right? Yeah, exactly. Right. <laughs> Out of all the voice actors that, uh, uh, I mean, I'm gonna, you're gonna think I'm, I'm just trying to avoid the question. I don't find a lot of them terribly attractive, if you want my honest opinion. <laughs> Um, but, but, uh, I suppose, um, oh, God, you know what, maybe, um, oh, I would totally nail Patrick Sykes. Because you know why? I want to see if his ass is as hairy as I think it is. I'm just saying, that's a great question, thank you, thank you. Um, why are you leaving this, and why is this your last question? Okay, that's a good question. I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm like, what? Where's the penis? What? Okay. Oh, oh, right, sorry. Okay. Why is this uh, my last convention appearance? That's a really, that's a good question. And actually, I've been asked that question like 10 times today. In like the autograph line, I'm like, come to my panel and find out. But so, so I guess I need to deliver. Right? So, okay, okay. So here's the deal. Here's the deal. Um, there's a few different parts to the answer. And I hope you'll, you'll bear with me in my telling the different parts. Uh, first, I'm burnt out uh, on conventions. This is actually, I know Wendy said 71. I think this is actually my 80th. Um, and I know there are some people that sort of like, love to go to conventions, like, 
fucking guests. They like to go like every weekend. Every, I can't fucking do it. I can't fucking do it. Because a lot of the new work that I'm getting takes place on the weekend anyway. And so conventions sort of cut into that. And as much as conventions have been a part of my life now for like over eight years, and it's been really fun, and I've met amazing people. And again, this is not bullshit. I'm very sincere about all this. But there comes a time in your life where certain chapters come to a close, and you start writing new ones. And also, the other part of it is, how many of you saw, where is Chris Case in here? Because I can never remember that. What is the name of that show exactly? Birdie the Mighty Decode. Birdie the Mighty Decode. Any of you know this show? OK. I recently, sort of recently, voiced a villain in that show called Malik. Malik, right? Malik. And that's the last anime role I've, that you'll ever hear me in. So I know, I know, right? So I felt like it would be disingenuous for me to keep going to conventions when, like, like I don't want to ride the. I know, I hear you. I'm sure. I, I don't want to ride the Sosuke greed wave into like 2014. You know what I mean? Like, like there's only going to be so much traction there. So because because I've, I've started lending my voice more to other sorts of voiceover projects and voiceover work. I've taken myself out of the anime loop field, and um, I, I just don't think it would be right. I think it would be kind of wrong to keep appearing at cons, and even though like fans would want to see me and stuff, I would still feel weird. About it. So that's sort of the that's the best way I can answer it. I so you're not retiring, right? No, no, no. In fact, I'm more busy than I ever have been before. It's just I'm not doing anime. So yeah. Porn? What I'm doing porn. Uh, <laughs> Patrick Seitz and I have one coming out. It's called, uh, it's called Bareback Mountain. <laughs> I can't quit you! <laughs> he can't quit me. Bareback Mountain? Bareback Mountain. Hairback Mountain. Oh, in this case, Hairback Mountain. Yeah, this is true. This is true. Or it would just be called Take a Razor to that shit. I don't know. Whatever. So I'm not retiring, no. And, oh, and to answer, because this question has come up when I announced this about a month ago at another con. Yeah, if they do do another installment of Full Metal Panic, I will fucking voice Sosuke Saga. Of course. Thank you. Alright, um, first of all, I'd just like to say thank you so much for all the work you've put into the uh, industry for the last, I don't know how long, but it's been really, really cool watching your career grow and watching the different cast. You've been in and so much that, so thank you very much. Thank you. Uh -huh. Thank you. Um, okay, so I'm kind of a socially awkward person, so I'm going to soothe my own ego by making you embarrassed. Uh, <laughs> Excellent. <laughs> so I was wondering, what's the stupidest thing you've ever done to attract the attention of somebody you liked? <laughs> <laughs> I, I mean, you know, oh god, I've done so much stupid shit. Um, I mean, like, in my teens, the stupidest thing I ever did to, like, win the approval of a girl, I was still dating girls back then, I was, whoops. <laughs> oh. <laughs> I took ecstasy. <laughs> um, yeah, but that's a, that was, yeah, drugs are bad, they're bad. Um, I took ecstasy and I'd never done any kind of drug in my life, and I started with a whole hit of, uh, in what was in the 80s called Baby Dome Ecstasy, and it was cut with like heroin and acid and everything, and uh, for 10 hours I was a hot, horny, disgusting mess. It was, it was bad. But like, you know, sometimes the stupid shit pays off. Case in point, <laughs> you know how I bagged Richard? I started stalking him on Facebook. <laughs> <True facts. laughs> I mean, we had met a long time ago at a convention. He was translating for some uh, bands or something like that, or working for Harry Low or something. Yeah. I think. Uh, whatever. And uh, but then, like, he, we, I don't know. Somehow, we found each other on Facebook, and uh, he was still with a dude. I remember when his status said in a relationship. I'm like, fuck. Uh. <laughs> He was in Tokyo at the time, and I'm like, he's gonna move his ass here. And guess what? Now he lives with me in Houston. Hey! <laughs> I'm just saying. So, yeah, I've, I've done lots of stupid shit. Yeah, everyone has. Don't, so, if you ever do something stupid to attract the attention of a guy, then you're just a human being. Yeah. Thanks a lot. You're welcome. Yeah. So, I'm not getting the camera. I'll fix the banner later. Oh, and I want to tell you about these boxes in a little bit, but I'll fix the banner when I'm done with the panel, I swear. I just told it, I don't want mm, banner drama. Okay, shit. All right. Yeah, okay, go ahead. So I'm going to get murdered for this, but you all are at an anime convention and you had to come in. Do you play the game? I've got something to say about that. I hate these 
stupid, stupid, like, fucking 4chan meme thing so goddamn much. Let me tell you something. You don't lose the game by someone saying the phrase, the game. Let me tell you how you lose the game. Jerking off in your grandmother's basement while you play video games. That's how you lose the game. Never getting sunlight. That's how you lose the game. Having sub-dub debates on the internet, you lost the fucking game. Yeah, I play the game. Thank you, I love you. Just lost the fan. Okay. Yes. Oh, yeah, I did a chain. Okay, one time, you guys. I was in this anime called Knights of the Zodiac. I played my first gay superhero ever, uh, Andromeda Shun, and, uh, and he uh, it looked like this, pretty much, and he had, he had chains, and he called them his nebula chains, and the great thing was, is like, the way he sensed danger is these very phallic nebula chains would start reacting when danger was near. So like, you know, basically they were getting hard-ons for danger. So, but the best thing that Shun ever did in the whole series was his brother was dying, and he jumps on top of him, Shun does, and he's like rump humping him, and he goes, Brother, don't be afraid. I'll put my cosmos inside you, and it will warn you from the inside. <laughs> and we all want to be saved by incestuous butt sex. <laughs> That's awesome, thank you. Do you have a question? <laughs> what would you say the steps are people need to take if they want to become a voice actor? Okay. Okay, first, sleep with the right people. No, not really. Okay, so there's a really, there's a really long answer to this question that that uh, it's sort of hard to encapsulate, even in a you could do a, you could do a three-hour panel on this subject. Um, to to cheat, I know, I know, I won't take too long. Talk about scarring the fuck out of some kid. Um, you know these nightmares for ten years from now. The first thing that a lot of people don't understand about being a voice actor is you have to be a fucking actor. You have to be an actor. I have so many people who come up to me and they say, I have a really pretty voice, and I want to be a voice actor. And I'm like, Tom T, have you ever taken an acting class? <laughs> because if you haven't, it, 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 it's just it's silly. Now, you could be a phone sex operator, probably, but even that requires a certain level of skill. Um, but uh, act. First of all, act. Get involved in acting. And, and, and let me just put this put this this bug in your ear. If if you don't, if you try to get involved in like theater or, or on camera acting or blah blah blah, whatever, an improv troupe, you try doing stand up or something, and you realize I don't like this. I just want to dub anime. You don't really want to be a voice actor, and you're not you're not probably gonna be a voice actor. So I have to say, act. Train your voice. Take care of your voice. Get a really good demo made. Um, depending on where you live. It gets, see, this is where it gets confusing. Depending on where you live, you'll definitely want an agent. You'll definitely want to be in the union. In Texas, I live in a right-to-work state. I don't want to be in the union. It would phase me out of getting a lot of work. Um, so, but uh, if you are serious about it, can I recommend like the most amazing? Well, I don't know. Some of my LA friends might disagree. I don't know. This is the I think this is the most amazing book on the subject, and that's um, the Art of Voice Acting by James Allberger. Um, did, yeah? No? Never read it? Okay, I think it's great. Oh, whatever. I, I, they call it like the voiceover bible, um, and I totally recommend it. So, yeah. If you're serious about it, go for it. Thank you. Thank you. Awesome. Alright, so... Uh, it's alright. You have a powerful voice. It's okay. Don't apologize. Alright, so you did this on your first panel here, um, but I thought it was hilarious. Can you, uh... Reenact the uh, suppose uh, what you would do if you played so skate who actually had sex with chittery. Okay, wait, I think I think I... So how many of you are full metal panic fans? 
So you know that like Sosuke is the short, socially awkward military guy who's never gonna put his penis in anything, right? <laughs> Except maybe curts his mouth one day, maybe. <laughs> oh no, you did not, this guy. Yeah. Anyway, no. So but we all wanted to bone Konami, and so like someone said, "What, what would Sosuke do?" If, like, what would Sosuke do? WWSD. <laughs> Sorry. Okay. So I think this is sort of how I imagine him like trying to hit on on Konami. <laughs> Miss Chittery, I, I'd like to put my missile in your gun barrel. I'd like to pump a round of artillery into you and fill you with shock and awe. Again, I would like to motorboat your clitoris with my tongue. And if I choke on a little bit of your pussy juice, it's not a problem. Thank you. You're welcome. Hey! <laughs> Feel free to adjust it. I do it often. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right. How you doing, Chris? I'm good. Wait, I remember you. Yeah? yeah. yeah. That's a... Uh, ooh. It's all right. It's all right. All right. Uh, <laughs> I was attending one of your panels in Anime USA once. Yes. Yes. Okay. Since then, I've actually been getting small bit works for radio. Yes. You have now, a very good voice. Thank you. I remember you. Yeah. Now, you did... Um, oh, gee. Uh, I did something. It did impressed you. Me. Yeah. You pulled me to I the, remember you. You pulled me to the side. You kind of scared me for a second. But then yeah. I realized... You thought I was going to rape you. I know. Yeah, I thought. I know. <laughs> no, I always buy you dinner first. Oh, yeah. Thank you. I was like, this is so cool. But yeah. I mean, and I say surprise. <laughs> <laughs> When I was wondering, yeah. I've actually been in a certain situation where I was like, what would Chris Patton do? Yeah. So I was, yeah, I know. Now here's the thing. I was recording a commercial for blank, because I'm not going to say You're what You're going to say that. I don't know. Okay. I was just saying, have you ever been feeling real down? No, 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 cut, cut, cut. Try it higher. I was like, okay. Have you ever been feeling real down? No, try it lower. Have you been feeling real down? No, and this is exactly what he told me. I'm not kidding. Act harder. Which you should have gone, hold on. <laughs> okay. I know, I know. That's, yeah, I call that, I call that nebulous direction. Like where, where the director doesn't really know what the fuck he wants. So he throws things at you and sees what kind of monkey shit sticks on the wall. And then what happens is you as the actor finally interpret it, get the take right, and then, then, then you, then you've done it. Yeah, so what did you, how did you solve the problem? How did you end the situation? Well, I did the most outrageous voice I can remember. Have you ever been feeling real down? No, get out! <laughs> what? Get out! Just so you booked the gig and they yeah. fired you from the gig? Yeah, he just said, get out! Did you fuck his wife? <laughs> she was a strange story about that, Chris. <laughs> no, no, no. So, so, so where, did the, where did the what would Chris Cotton do come into that? Well, I, I, I was thinking, just like then, act harder. What would Chris do? I would piss on the guy. <laughs> Who's on the other side of the glass, though? How would you get past that? Act harder? I, I don't know. Yeah, that's a shame. So oh, have you gotten gigs since then? Oh, yeah. And you've nailed them? Small bit. You rocked part. it out? No, yeah, well. Good. No, well, okay, no. where do you live? I, uh, uh, Virginia. Okay. Well, keep I think going. Keep kicking ass. If you just keep willpower, if you've got the talent, nothing is going to help you more than your fucking willpower, man. So just use it. Hey. Hey. Um, <clears throat> um, first off, I want to. Sorry. I'm no, no, that's not your fault. I'm not used to my own voice. And <laughs> it's okay. <laughs> um, first off, I want to say that I'm just going to miss you. It's, because. To be honest, I want to be in voiceovers, and because of it, I've had a lot of inspiration, and you're one of the biggest. Oh, thank you. Thank you so much. Regardless of what you've done, I will still respect you. <laughs> <laughs> so that's honesty. I mean. Thank you. But now, uh, you're welcome. <laughs> but um, now to the question. Okay. Um, this is the, the sort of thing that I would ask about everyone. Okay. 
Um, what would you say is your biggest turn on and your biggest turn off? And it's 11. No. <laughs> My biggest turn on. <clears throat> uh, like. What gets me like revved up sexually? Like, is that what you mean? Or do I have. Are you asking if I have fetishes? Are you asking if I have a type? Are you asking. What? He's asking the question. If you have time, I'll be about you. <laughs> okay. Uh, what gets me... Okay, first of all, one of the things that gets me really sexually revved up, and this is really weird, uh, <laughs> booking a lot of gigs turns me on. Like, seriously. Like, Richard could probably attest that we've had the most sex in the weeks that I booked the most gigs in a week. I'm just saying. Is that true? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, okay, good. So, uh, music turns me on. Like, music really, like, certain kinds of music. Like, like, uh... Oh, by the way, could you tell from the, the, the free show music that I'm gay? <laughs> like, like, wait, Lady Gaga, Queen... Okay, yeah, alright. Uh, uh, music is very sensual to me, and it, massage turns me on a lot. Massage turns me on. Giving and getting. Massage turns me on a lot. <laughs> fetishes? Fetishes. Shit. I have an underwear fetish. I have a total thing about guys in briefs, okay? I have a, I have a brief fetish. I am a bit of a masochist. And... <laughs> and, um... And that's the fetishes. And my type? Honest to God, it's so funny, you guys. Okay, like before I even met Richard or really started talking to him, I was on this site, <laughs> someone was gonna be like, yeah, I was on this site called Just Guys, and <laughs> some girl was like, I found my boyfriend on that site, I hate you. So no, yeah, I fucked him. No, no, but like, okay, so I was on this site called Just Guys, and you have to fill out this profile, and part of it is like, what do you look for? What do you like? Describe your perfect guy. And I was like, so I guess because I'm tall, I like short guys, and I like short guys with dark hair, and if he's got dark hair, I'd love for him to have blue eyes, and I'd love for him to be like a little bit alternative, but not totally freaky and smelly, and I'd like for him to be, to be really intelligent, and I'd like for him to be spiritual, and then like, like, I swear to you, as soon as I put all that out there into the universe, fucking Richard rolled into my life, and he was like all that in one big nice little fuckable package. So, everybody, Richard Davis! <laughs> After Richard's asleep, Patrick. Uh, um, um, before the next question, because I, I keep seeing the boxes and I keep, I keep forgetting to say this, um, a really, how many of you know Blake Shepard as a voice actor? Like, yeah, he's really sweet, he's really talented, he's a really great guy, and um, something total shit happened to him the other day. A drunk driver fucking hit his sister in the middle of the street. Like, not in a car, she was standing, and um, uh, she is, motherfucker was going 40, in a SUV and hit her, and uh, she got written a ticket for jaywalking and he got away. Uh, yeah, and now she's, she's in the intensive care unit, sort of in an induced coma, I believe, and uh, Blake is sort of destroyed right now. He's also sort of the archetype of the poor, starving, struggling artist, uh, animator, voice actor. He kind of does it all, but he's in, in a really bad state right now. I, I kind of talked about this at opening ceremony. Wendy talked about it at her panel, so I'm sorry if it's redundant for anybody, but like, People have been so like, fucking generous and everything. I knew a lot of people would be in here, so I guess at the end of this or whatever, I, we don't want to take up the space for too long. You know, there's there's the rave and everything. But if you guys could donate in, like a dollar, a fucking dollar, seriously, we're just trying to get money to Blake to help him the medical bills and the grieving process and all the shit he's going through. So I just wanted to say that that's what the little pink boxes are for. They're not pseudo vaginas. But um, <laughs> I know. Sorry, Patrick. But, um, <laughs> 
But uh, yeah, so I wanted to put that out there. Okay. Wow. We should kiss me in front of a thousand people. Okay, so. You're saying you're good. I know. I like it. I like it. I heard the Lady Gaga song, I like it rough. Yeah. Okay, go ahead. Come on. Sorry, sorry, sorry. Yes. If you were a stripper, what would your stage name be? Dick Palin. Okay, I think everybody's really curious about this, you know, especially since you walked in and stayed quite bluntly. I'm a homosexual. Uh -huh. So, I know. dominant or submissive? Right, 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 right. <laughs> also, what do I have to do to get some of that action going on? <laughs> Okay, uh, first, a real funny story about the first part of the question. Um, oh God, this is shares too much, right? I said I'd answer anything. So here goes. In all my years of like buggery with dudes, um, I've always been like very aggressive and um, dominant, etc., etc., etc. And then, <laughs> uh, and then like Richard comes along. And like, I don't know what it is about like his personality or his brain or whatever. And like, because I mean, I don't know, good looking guys are everywhere, but there's something about a good looking guy who has all these extra qualities that makes them like ridiculously powerful. And um, I hate, I hate giving myself over. Like I hate relinquishing control of myself to anybody except for like the acting process. And so it, it, somehow with Richard though, I'm incredibly submissive. Yeah, exactly, there you go. Now you're asking how you can make out with my boyfriend? Is that what you're asking? No. No. <laughs> no. Come on. Okay, I got a two-part question for you. I love two-parters, that's what she said. <laughs> nice. um, first part of the question, has your boyfriend ever made you dress and drag in a way that convinced other people that you're actually female? No. No. <laughs> Hey, I, I'm totally down with the transgender community. Uh, I have never in my life at all felt one inkling or, or, or proclivity toward cross-dressing or... I mean, I've always felt like a guy. Like, like I've always felt like a guy who's attracted to guys. And I know that, that sexuality is a very complex, interesting maze of an issue, but... But no, I mean, I know your question's partly joking, but there's probably a kernel of seriousness in there. And the truth is, I, I totally get the, the transgenderism and inter, being intersexed and all that, but um, no, nah, I'm just a dude. And I don't even like, I, I, in fact, I've been in the, the live version of the Rocky Horror Show before, twice. And I played, I played Riff Rap and Frankenfurter, and I gotta tell you, Riff Rap's more fun just because you don't have to wear fucking heels. Like, I mean, Frank's fun, he's, the, he's like the anti-hero of the story, right? But I mean, like, I, I'm sorry, that, that's, uh, it, it's a bitch. All the fishnets and the bustiers with your yays being boosted and like the, <laughs> the, the, the toes and the heels. But finding like big ass fucking stiletto heels for a guy who wears size 12, like men's, uh, no, no, it's a nightmare. My so. wife had a problem with that too. Yeah? Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, okay, all right. Gotcha. All right, excellent, thank you. Thank you for the question. Cool. Yes. Approach. This isn't going to really make you feel too pressured or anything. Okay. Um, what are your favorite songs by Lady Gaga, Queen, and Depeche Mode? Ah! Oh, wow, you just named three of my treasures. <laughs> uh. Oh, okay, 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 oh god, okay, Lady Gaga, I was actually thinking about this in the shower earlier, because I was like, because I, Richard really, like, at first with the Gaga, I, I got into her for a little bit, about three years ago, and I was like, I don't know how I feel about this woman with the button hair and everything, I don't know, like, but then I found out she was like, that she had a Freddie Mercury thing going on, like, she was like, sort of worship Freddie Mercury or whatever, and, I'm like, and then Richard comes into my life, and he's like, here, listen, I would go off to do a gig, and he, he would give me the fame. To listen to him, I'm like, this is fucking good, oh my god. It's like crack, shit. And, um, so my favorite songs are, I think right, they change, but I think right now my favorite songs are Speechless, and uh, Teeth. Those are my two favorites. But because of Richard, I have a very soft spot for boys, 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 because that was, that was his theme song for me for the longest time. So it was really cute. 
So, uh, I like that song. And then, okay, Depeche Mode. Oh, fuck's sake. I mean, they've got like 40 albums and I've seen them in concert like 10 times. I don't know. Uh, probably their best song ever is like, uh, Enjoy the Silence or our Personal Jesus. One of those. And then Queen, again, that's incredibly difficult, but Hammer to Fall, uh, Show Must Go On. And my all time favorite ever is I Want to Break Free. Oh my god. Yeah? Yes. Awesome. You look really good. You look, didn't she look good? Yeah, she looks awesome. Yeah. What's up? Okay, I'm pretty sure you get one of me. At least. Yeah. Yo, know, first off, I have one <laughs> You have an intense vibe. Okay, go ahead. Uh, thank, you. thank you. Okay, second off, do you think that Roy Mustang looks totally sexy in a mini skirt? Yeah, you want me to say it as three, don't you? Oh, yeah! Roy Mustang looks dead fucking sexy in a mini skirt. <laughs> Hello. You're holding a very large phallic object. Go ahead. Yeah! Yeah! How are you doing, Chris? I'm good, how are you? I'm good. Awesome. Um, I, uh, what, uh, what, uh, sorry. It's okay. It's okay. I met, I, I, I met you last year at DK. You're awesome. Thank you. You're awesome for actually doing a panel like this, which is pretty cool. Thank you. Thank you. I was wondering, since you did Nero Medikin Brothers, how did you, ever, how did you get, get involved in this project? And how did you get able to get part of it? Nero Medikin Brothers? Yeah. Uh, a friend of mine that I'm sure almost everyone in this room knows, named Chris Ayers, uh, <laughs> was assigned the role of directing this musical anime. How many of you know Nero Medikin Brothers? Yeah, so it's a musical comedy anime, and he needed to pick three people who could not only do comedic voice acting, but who could also sing. And so he ended up choosing, actually, his brother and myself and Lucy Christian as the three leads, and then some great fucking amazing singers from the, the Houston talent pool for some of the, the smaller roles. Oh, and Vic plays an amazing role in that show, too. But I played this dude named Ichiro, who uh, was a, he worked at a host club, and... Uh, he flirted with old women and old men for money, but he only had love for a panda. <laughs> and um, so uh, the way I got involved is Chris asked me to audition, and I, we actually auditioned with the hand job hot dog scene. That was how. Yeah. So he basically wanted to see how I would handle that scene, and I guess I hit it out of the park because I got the role. And um, I had a lot of fun doing that. That show was awesome. Lots of fun. Yeah. Thank you. Cool. Yes. All right. Your first, the first year I went to your Chris Pan shows too much. Mm -hmm. You were asked the question about uh, signing body parts. Yeah. You made a comment. I asked you about it the next year, but I missed out your panel because you told me to ask you out of your panel. Yeah. You made a comment that uh, you would like for someday, someday, some guy just flop his slum on the table and try to sign. It. I mean, I really used to think that would be the most epic shit in the world. <laughs> If like, if like, because you know, and yeah, I've had girls literally run up to me and, and pull out their boobs and demand I sign their tits, like very aggressively. And I, back at this time, I was single, Richard. Back at this, two years ago, I was like, man, why doesn't some like hot dude just come up and flop his fucking dick on the table and say, will you sign this for me? Because you know, I mean, whatever. I, I still think it would be hilarious, but now that I have like a really serious partner, I think it would disturb me, and and I have a bit of germophobia, and I might like want to put sanitizer on the car. I don't know. I don't know. So, but I mean, I still think it would be. I, I think it would be an interesting thing to have happen. It just so many things could go very wrong. So I think I think in two years some things have changed. Some some uh, it, I think now. Oh oh, regarding that, I have to tell you the funniest fucking thing about that very thing. I was doing this panel in Austin, Texas, and uh, Austin and um, this little like emo dude who I thought had snuck in and was maybe too young. He's little fucking scrawny pale emo dude who's right on the front row, and I got to talking about that very thing, and he was like. <laughs> I'm not so emo anymore. And then like, like he comes up to me after the panel and he goes, I'll never forget this shit. And he really, he had the best joke of the night. He goes, Mr. Patton, do you want to sign my cock? I was, like, I was like, are you being fucking serious? He goes, 
Well, the truth is, I'm half Asian, so you'd only be able to get C and P on there. <laughs> I told him you win. Thank you. Hello. Hi. Okay, All right, I have two questions for you. No! Yes. <laughs> All right, first one is, what was like the kind of, how old were you when you first realized that you might be homosexual? Woohoo! Okay. <laughs> is that, oh, oh, yeah. right. Sorry, I want to take a picture of you guys. Do you have ADHD? Probably. <laughs> I have ADHD, giant nut syndrome, I don't know. when I started identifying with oh, God damn. Room full of power bottoms. All right. Some people in here got that. Uh, uh, so I was 14 when I started identifying as bisexual. And um, I guess technically, technically speaking, I am, biologically speaking, I am pretty bisexual is in the fact that I've never, I mean, I've always dated men and women, and it's always been whoever I'm in love with, I'm in love with, so, but like, I don't know, kind of after this last girl, the last girl I did date, she kind of wrecked it, <laughs> and um, I think I just, I think I just went strictly dickly, and, um, and that's when I went on the hunt for the ultimate male partner, and um, uh, yeah, Richard Allen Davis. Uh, so that's, that's how that went down. I'm giggity. <laughs> 14. 14 years old. Well, you beat me by five years. Hey, uh, so what was your second question? My second question, I'm a big fan of Rocket Power Picture Show, so would you mind singing part of State Trans Website? Like the first... <laughs> you didn't mention that, to you? Let me see. Surely I can remember that fucking song I've been singing since I was 10. I can help you if you need it. Uh, I know how it's going. Trying to get in the right mindset. The Frankenfurter frame of mind. How do you do I? See you've met my faithful handyman. He's just a little brought down because when you knocked, he thought you were the candy man. Don't get strung out by the way I look. Don't judge a book by its cover. I'm not much of a man by the light of day, but by night I'm one hell of a lover. What's up? Hey. Um, hey. Sorry, uh, another two-parter, I guess. That's good. Um, first, I know you've already been asked to do Greed's voice tonight, but I'd like to ask you to answer the next question in Greed's voice, if you could. What is the worst situation you have ever had with a fan? <laughs> and I mean the worst. Oh, you want an honest answer, though. <laughs> One time this... <laughs> I was doing this very panel at a convention in St. Louis, Missouri. And actually, Miss Christina V was there as well. She knows exactly what I'm about to say. Because as I was doing this panel, this slimy, tattooed motherfucker got up, came to my table, and licked me on the face. <laughs> Worst being experience ever. Seriously. They probably threw him out of the convention. Yeah. That's the worst. Yeah. Thank you. You're welcome. Hey, oh. 
Yeah. Well, first, I gotta say that this is the most awesome panel I've ever been to, but also the most depressing. Aww. I have Prozac in my room. <laughs> Richard and I show that up each other's asses every night. It's just, uh, we play Prozac suppository games. Only because I've been into anime for a while, but not that huge psycho fandom that we all know and love. The, the face licking kind. Oh, yeah. yeah. A little below that, but yeah. yeah. And I just finally got to say, okay, who is voicing these characters? Somebody gives me Full Metal Panic. And I was like, oh, I like this guy. And it's like, oh my fucking god, I love this guy! <laughs> so I finally say, oh, shit, he's here this weekend. So I have to come see it. And now I'm here, and it's like, the first thing is, because I know nothing about you, it's like, oh my god, he's gay. That is the most awesome shit ever! <laughs> so this Sakura likes dicks, and it's not a problem. Don't ask, don't tell. Unfortunately, that's why it's so depressing that I caught you on the last time they were going to be doing this. But, yeah. Yeah. question. Um, yes. Say life is a soap opera. You yeah, let's both pretend. pretend. <laughs> <laughs> Unfortunately, you have to do a death scene. What death scene are you going to do to make sure that everybody on the face of the planet knows your name till the end of time? Uh, I think I might have Richard kill me in an auto-asphyxiatic strangulation masturbatory ritual. <laughs> and, and, Patrick Sykes would videograph the whole thing. <laughs> and post it all over fucking YouTube. <laughs> Fuck you, Jeffree Star! <laughs> <laughs> you okay? You coughing on that? No, I'm just more socially awkward than the last uh, person. It's okay. Sorry. It's a contest. No, no, she doesn't need a hug. Cry. Kind of a antidote first. I want to say thank you. I love you. One year, two years ago, I think you came here. It's when the autograph line was just cut off. Everybody from beyond a certain point was just totally told to go away. You picked me up off the floor and gave me a hug and an autograph. So oh. thank you. Awesome. Short question first. Richard, Richard Ian Cox mentioned it earlier, and it was kind of a question I wanted to ask you. Yeah. What does he think about your zaniness? <laughs> 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 wait, 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 wait. No, this, this is cool. Like, what do you, how do you really feel about, like, all this shit and, like, the way I act? Yeah. Well, I mean, like Chris said, like, we first met years ago at a convention in Florida, and I used to do some work, like, doing translating and things like that, so I've always kind of been involved with, like, the anime convention scene, and, uh, yeah, I love being here and Chris's energy, and like you said, you know, it's the things he does for the fans that really, you know, touches my heart, too, and I see so many people leave comments and, you know, that really are just these memories with Chris that have really made a difference for them, and that's one of the things I really do love about him. Aww. Oh, okay. <laughs> awesome. Well, there you go. I mean, yeah, go ahead. A more serious one. Yeah. Because I am socially awkward, but I've always loved. I mean, I'm really bad. This is. I'm shaking right now. That's okay. But I've always liked acting creative stuff like that, what would you suggest for someone like me to getting more, like, less Can I tell you something uh, that you may not know about me? I don't know, were you at Shears too much two years ago? No, I'm... Were you, you, you weren't at it last year? I'm a teen. Because this will be new to you. This will be new to you. I used to be... Do you know about agoraphobia? Mm -hmm. I used to have such bad fucking agoraphobia and panic attacks in, in high school that I couldn't leave my room. Um, I guess I was never really technically what you call, I mean, a lot of people call themselves socially awkward, I don't know that, my problem was that I was just scared shitless of life, I was scared to death, and yet, I wanted to act more than anything else in the world, and I'd actually been a professional actor, stage actor when I was a kid, 
Like I was performing on professional regional stages when I was a child. And then I hit puberty and everything went haywire inside my system, including my gaydar. <laughs> and, um, <laughs> but I, 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 I had terrible fucking panic attacks, was diagnosed as agoraphobia. And um, I never, you know, all my dreams were dashed to hell. You know, I thought, I can't even leave my room. I, can't, I dropped out of school, of high school for a while. I quit going to school because I was so scared of the fucking, of the world. And, I mean, I, I'm like, you know, talking about my dick in front of a thousand people right now. So, you know, I mean, there's hope. You know, nothing, nothing is insurmountable. You know what I mean? Like, like, and again, it comes down to willpower and how bad you really want it. I mean, I, how old are you? You're 19, so like you're a, you're a zygote, you're a sperm, you're a baby, you're an egg. So you know you've got lots of time to work on your shit. And, and you I've tried it before. I kind of you tried it. And did you like it? I had fun, but I kind of tripped and face planted into the stage. Okay. And my teacher never took me seriously. You know what? I've been on I've been on the professional stage when people have vomited on the stage. So you know, I mean, so you tripped. You know what? People trip. All I saw someone on Broadway fucking fall into the orchestra pit one time. <laughs> Okay? I mean, shit happens. You know, movie stars have boogers and smelly shit too. You know what I mean? Like, there's nothing to worry about if you tripped on stage. Don't let that shit fuck you up. Like, seriously. And, and if you really like it, and it really calls to you, and it tugs at you, whatever you feel your social awkwardness is, that's going to fall away the more you actively pursue an acting career. Seriously. Do you study it at college right now? Not in school? Yet. Just Are you going to? Yes. Okay, that'll be a great... Do you know a lot of people take acting in college just to get over social awkwardness? Seriously, I, when I was studying theater in college, there would always be like five people in there that were like auditing because they wanted some sort of career that required them to be bold in public, and they just had... They had no fucking social skills, and they were like little wallflowers. By the end of the semester, they were getting up and delivering great monologues and doing scenes. So do that, and you will see all the stuff that holds you back fall away. I remember you, yeah, yeah, yeah. They're all gonna murder me as soon as I get back to the room, so thanks for being here. Hopefully it's ritual murder. Yeah. Like that, yeah that's the best so, kind. Thank you for making my last hour with me. Absolutely. But anyway, I was wondering if you had any sort of tips or stories about coming out. Because my, about... parents, my parents didn't believe me. They didn't believe you? They didn't believe me. My, okay, you wanna know what? I grew I mean, I love my mom like nobody's business. She said my dad's a fucking dick. My mom. <laughs> fucking dick. My mom is awesome. She's fantastic. She's also like socially, she's incredibly liberal. Politically, she's sort of middle of the road. But she and my entire family are a uh, pretty staunch Roman Catholic. And to find out that the little altar boy who grew up to suck cock, you know, is not the most... So when I first said I was bisexual, she was like, oh no, you're not. You're just... You know, you're very liberal, you're a liberated soul, and you're, you're artistic and expressive, and you're just experimenting with things. No, I like penises, really. <laughs> I really do. And she would, and can I tell you something? Until my relationship with Richard, she didn't come to terms with it. So I honestly, but let me tell you something. Until Richard, I had serious relationships with girls. All I'd done with dudes was like fuck around and hook up and have like little stupid dates and like two month relationships and stuff. I think what it took was seeing me with somebody that made me genuinely happy, someone that challenged me and was on my level spiritually, mentally, artistically, and who helped. Okay, my mom actually has a great saying. She says, once a relationship quits growing, then it should end. And I kind of, I think that's a little harsh, but I think it's true to a great extent. And I think she sees me in a relationship that she sees potential growth for. So now the gay thing isn't even an issue. She just likes Richard. You know what I mean? Like, she's like, how's Richard? Did you tell Richard hi? Is Richard coming out with us tonight? She just likes Richard. She doesn't care about, am I bisexual? Am I gay? Am I, am I, you know, whatever. Uh, she just cares that I'm happy and in a solid, healthy relationship where we're both very productive, active, proactive, growing, people growing together. So I think the key might be to, to find the right person for yourself first. And I know this is hard, because if she's just not believing you, if you find someone that you're really fucking in love with, and you really want to commit to, then I think, I mean, I can't guarantee, because everyone's different, but that might be more of a, it might show her, oh, well, this is real, you know. That's all I can say about that. Yeah. Richard actually is a counselor, so <laughs> maybe. <laughs> Maybe you could talk to him, I don't know. Well, 
Looks like the end of an era, huh? Yeah, it is. But what an end. I know shit, right? <laughs> yeah. So regarding this era, your extensive, extensive voice work and so forth, I'm mm -hmm. um, just wondering if there was ever a moment, beginning or near the end, where it's like, there's this character, and it's like, I'm gonna do this, it's gonna be great. And someone else got the part. And to this day, you're like, bitch, I could have done so much better than you. <laughs> there have been parts that I wanted that I didn't get. I think once it happens that you didn't land the role and, you, and someone else gets it, I think the best thing to do is wrap it up in the pink of divine love and set it free. Because like, if you start listening to it and trying to critique their performance, I think naturally your, your ego is gonna automatically be like, that person fucking sucks. <laughs> I'm so goddamn better than that. He's a shit motherfucker. I'm trying to force him to fucking kill me. God damn it. So, yes, the answer is yes. <laughs> of course. Because, you know, there's a joke how many actors does it take to screw in a light bulb? Uh, one, but thousands could do it better, right? And so, <laughs> and, and, and that's the truth. You, but as an actor, you're always sort of fighting with your ego, I think. You're always trying to transcend your ego and put it aside and say, I'm a, I'm a fucking actor because I'm an, I'm an artist, and I want to do art, and I want to be a storyteller. Not because I want to compete with all these people. Not because I want, not because Johnny on Bosch, Greg Ayers, Kristen Freeman, and whoever else and I are all in competition. Fuck that, we're all friends, you know what I mean? Like, we, we all just work in the same business. Not, it can't be about, I could have done that so much better, or you, you know what, you'll, you'll kill yourself in the inside. So, yeah, I've gone through it, and I've grown out of it. Yeah. Well, awesome. <laughs> yeah. And um, I just want to say, you are my second inspiration to get into voice acting as well. I bet you've heard that a million times. I, I've heard it a lot, and every time I hear it, it means the world to me. So thank you. Yeah. Seriously. Well, thank you. Hey. Hey. Uh, first, I want to say thank you for being out. Because oh. I'm, I'm family too, and I'm just sick of other actors that think their whole career is going to get ruined if, they, if they're yeah. out of that, so. I think it's about time for a lot of motherfuckers to come out of the closet. Yeah, I really do. But um, two voice acting questions. Yeah. I've, I've just recently started doing voice acting for audiobooks and, and full cast audiobooks and stuff. Fantastic. I, um, yeah. It's tough, isn't it? It is. But it's oh very fun. Yeah. yeah. Uh, well, the first question is, how the hell do you keep in an emotional space when you're doing a really intense scene and you're like reading this really tender moment line and the director's like, oh, that's great, but could you do it again this, this way? And you have to do it five times. On, on set, like on a movie set, I can just like be there, I'm on set, I'm in the moment or whatever, and I can do you know, multiple takes, but in the voice, it, it's weird for me in, in the booth. We're getting into a weird area here because we're almost sort of talking about theory and technique. Like and that's an area where I get uncomfortable because, let me tell you why, I would never be a good acting teacher because I believe that, or maybe I would, I don't know, because I believe that every actor has to get there however they can fucking get there. I, I, well, I totally agree, but and I, I, and I don't, so I hate to tell someone, I almost hate to tell people what I do or how I do it because I don't want, the, I don't want you to think that's how you have to do it, but for me, um, I have to, I, I, I'll go ahead and say this, I'm not ashamed of it, it's just it's going to sound airy-fairy to a lot of you, and that's totally cool. But the way I approach acting, whether I'm on stage or behind a microphone or whatever, is I... There's actually a great book, by the way, called The Way of the Actor, and it looks at acting from a shamanic standpoint. Which I know that sounds... just... just ride with me here for a second. It's... It's not necessarily inside out or outside in, it's not Stanislavski or Meisner or Stella Adler, it's sort of all of it, because what it is is you sort of, you, however you can, however you need to, the actor puts themselves in a shamanic state, and, and you're, not, you're not fucking insane, you're always cognizant that you're you, you're always going to know that if you're not, if you're a sane person, but you, it is like the character is sort of casting a benevolent possession over you. You see what I'm saying? So, and that really actually happens to me a lot in audiobook work, which I'm, I'm doing more and more of, and I'm finding it a real challenge, but very exciting, because I get in this little dark booth with the computer screen, and it's just me. And there's the engineer, like, in another part of the fucking building, you know, almost, and, and I get into sort of a shamanic mindset, and it, it, I feel, I mean, it sounds sort of lunatic, and I know this, but it's, you know, I sort of, I try to imagine that the characters are, are taking over, are sort of inhabit, are, are crawling up inside of me. Giggy. And, uh, <laughs> and uh, that's 
that's how I approach it. And yeah, it, it's very, ner- it is nerve-wracking. And they're like, oh, you know what? You could have really not fucked that up so badly. Could yeah. you do the game? Suck yeah. ass. Got- your mouth's really clicky today. Yeah, I know. I sucked your boyfriend off. Whatever. All right. <laughs> no, but, but uh, so, I don't know. I just don't, I, I try not What's to get the turd. I get into that, that weird shamanic state. And that, when that shit happens, Part of me gets kind of twitchy and annoyed, but there's there's one little space in my head where I'm keeping everything spinning. You know what I mean? What was the name of that book again? Uh, the Way of the Actor. I will get it tomorrow. Yeah, um, all right. <laughs> and the second question is, I'm at the point where I'm like about to put together a reel. Yeah. I just don't know what the hell to put on it. Is there is there somewhere to go to listen to, like, because on YouTube I could go to an actor's reel. Have you been to, have you been been to my website? <laughs> no, I have not. Okay, if you go to voiceofchrispatton.com, go to voiceofchrispatton.com. Uh, if you go to that, seriously, I've got a whole bunch of different demos of mine up there, and you can see, like, I've got, I've got corporate, corporate narration demo, I've got e-learning, I've got audiobook demo, I've got commercial demo, I've got, you, thing is, you, you're not just going to have one demo, yeah. and I know it's costly and whatever, you've got to find the right engineer and blah, 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 but it's worth it. Um, but I've got my generic demo in there that's a minute long, and it sort of covers like seven different styles, right? And then I've got specific demos on there. Seriously, go to voice, and just use that as a template if you want. I mean, it, I think it'll guide you in the right direction. And my email is actually on that website, if you want to email me and ask me a specific question about getting a, a real me, you know, a demo me. Yeah, cool. Well, well thank you very much. Yeah, sure. Absolutely. What's up? Uh, first, I just want to say I think we all can agree that uh, Richard here is extremely lucky to be dating one of the coolest and sexiest voice actors that we know <laughs> this time. And I have two questions for you. Yes. Uh, going from Genius from Matt Cross, uh, Sosuke Sagar from Fullmetal Panic, and then Greed from Fullmetal Alchemist, how do you describe getting such badass, awesome roles every time you go to do an edition? I don't know. I gotta tell you, part of what I love is that I played all these badass villains and I'm a homo. Because, like, like, I think that's so excellent. Because if there are actually any anime fans out there who are homophobic, I'm like, suck it! Because, like, because, like, I know it's gotta blow their minds the first time they find out, like, Greed's gay? Maybe I should try it. Um, but, uh, I don't know. I think my voice... My voice either tends to go to, to, to pretty boy 20-something-year-old characters or to really, really fucked up villains. So, I don't know what that means or says about me, but, uh, I mean, it was Mike McFarlane, though, who actually turned the tide for me, because until Full Metal Alchemist, I'd only ever played the pretty boy heroes, which is great, it's good money, but it's, it's real easy. It's like, oh, I love you, and I'm going to pilot a mech for you. <laughs> <laughs> Shut up! Okay, so... But Mike McFarlane took a chance on me, and he's like, I want you to audition for this dude. You know about Full Metal, Full Metal Alchemist? I'm like, yeah, I've heard of it. And he goes, you know, none of it had been released or He goes, oh, there's this villain, and he's not in the show much, but he's a total badass, and his name's Greed. And um, I'm just going to take you through the paces of the first episode, and I'll see, and that'll be your audition. It'll be a paid audition. We'll just see how you do. And I finished the last line, and he was like, well, dude, you're fucking Greed. And... <laughs> That sort of turned the tide for me. All of a sudden, people started casting me as villains, you know? And, uh, I don't know. I mean, I still play the occasional, like, pretty boy type, uh, role. Like, in fact, in audiobooks, a lot of the audiobook work I do is young adult fiction, which isn't probably a surprise. Like, I, uh, but, but, uh, I don't know. My voice just tends to skew in that direction of the, the sexy villain. I love it! Brotherhood version. Oh yeah, he's, he's a total snarky pimp in Brotherhood. I love it. Yes, I'm waiting for that. And the second question is, I believe you said on your Facebook or somewhere else that you are actually going to be creating a book about Chris Patton Church too much. Is there any truth to that? And- there is truth to that. You want to know, I want to tell you all why I didn't bring that book here. Like, I made a really weird decision. I don't even talk about, about this with Richard. But like, I decided that if I brought that book here, that this would all look like some big fucking publicity stunt. So what I want to do is, I want to wait, I've got, I literally have like 95% of it written, I want to wait until I've got, till like about a year goes by. And people are like, oh, he's really not doing cons anymore, he's really not doing anime anymore. And then, I want to get the book, just, I just want to self-publish the book and put it up for sale on my website like a year from now. And then if people are still really interested in, it's just going to be like a chronicle of doing this panel at so many conventions. And if people are still really interested in buying it, cool, they'll, they'll do it. But yeah, I am, I have, I basically have the book done. Yeah. That's all I want to know, and also wanted to say that you definitely made me question my sexuality.
I did one more time. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. Again, if any of you don't know, uh, these are for. But it, it, like, are we gonna have time to do a little bit? Do you want it, Wendy? Well, How do you want to do this when the panel's over? Do you want to like walk through the crowd or something? Yeah, or just if you have a question. Yeah, whatever. I'll yeah. pass it on like it's crazy church. Yeah, know. crazy church. <laughs> it is crazy church. <laughs> um, yeah. <laughs> So this is for Blake Shepard and his sister, who is in the hospital, like, basically in a coma. Um, it's really fucking horrible, and I feel terrible for Blake. Okay, yeah, go ahead. Okay, so, um, this might kind of sound weird, but... Uh, trust me. <laughs> uh, yeah. <laughs> um, have you ever been, uh, in the moment with a sexual partner, and they have either asked you to do a voice... Let's go there for a second! <laughs> No, we don't have much time left. Uh, but I, this is a question worth answering. How many of you have seen or are familiar with the anime Razafan? Or as I like to call it, the good Evangelion? <laughs> oh no, you can't. So, okay. Okay, uh, I played a character, the lead character. His name was Ayato Kamina, right? And in the anime, he was frequently, frequently referred to as Kamina Kun especially by the, the girls who were into him. And, um, I was fucking this chick at the time that I was recording that show, and it was the one and only time I ever dated, like, a fangirl, and no offense to any fangirls, but it sort of, it sort of ruined me on them because of what I'm about to tell you. <laughs> so, one night we were fucking, like, we did a lot, because that's all the relationship was, was fucking. And, she was a big fan of the Razafon. And we're fucking. And she's underneath me, and at one point, she throws her head back and she goes, Oh, coming a cool. <laughs> Now, I'm finished. <laughs> but, barely. my dick rose again for three weeks. <laughs> so yeah, there you go. <laughs> but that's the only time it's ever happened. Oh, that, yeah, I was going to ask if, it, like, if they ever asked for it if you slipped into it. Ever. No, although sometimes when Richard's giving me head, I'm like, Guy! <laughs> Thank you. You're welcome. <laughs> What's up? Strangest place you've ever had sex at. Okay. Uh, so I had just been, I was dating this girl. I dated a lot of girls. I was dating this girl who was an alcoholic stripper. Good choice. Good choice. And um, uh, we were dancing at this club one night in Houston called Numbers. And uh, we were dancing and like we were like really sweaty and it was like we were all dancing off like fuck dancing and you know, our shit was like grinding together and like so we both got really we fucked a lot. And go figure, like a stripper who drinks alcohol and fucks a lot. <laughs> Weird. Uh, so uh, and then this this club was right across from one of those triple X porno theaters. And so she's drunk, she's like 12 sheets to the wind, and we leave the club, and she's like, hey, come on, let's fuck. Yeah, okay. And I start trying to go to the car. She's like, no, 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 no. We're gonna fuck here. And she starts taking me to this like rat roach infested like triple X movie theater. And she goes up to the guy working in the counter. She goes, if we get a booth to watch the movies, can we fuck? The guy's like, don't tell me about that shit. Get in the fucking booth. And so we did, and we like sat on this little fucking nasty, sticky, dirty bench and she hiked up her skirt and we fucked in this porno before we were watching this movie. <laughs> Classy! <laughs> yes. Hi, I know everybody's gonna probably be annoyed with this question. That's okay. It's a request from my friend, a long time, and it's kind of personally mine, but for the last time, would you do the panda song? Oh my god! <laughs> You guys, how many of you know the fucking panda song? This is the last time it's ever going to be sung in public. Uh, okay, so I told you about Mary and the Daikon Brothers before, and how I played this character named Ichiro, who had a thing for a panda. Well, like, I told you, it was a musical. 
And for th three different times in the show, he sings a love ballad to the panda. And this is the, I've sung this song, oh god damn, I don't know. Like, since 2006, I've been singing this song at conventions. Oh, I'm finally putting this shit under the ground. All right. For the last time ever, I'm going to sing Ichiro's love song to the motherfucking panda. <laughs> That's my dip for luck. Right. <laughs> fluffy, fluffy, panda, pandy. Don't know why you make me randy. When I poke you in my fantasy, I feel like I could cry. They'll say you're an animal. <laughs> but I'll say you're a mammal just like me. And we'll be furry through the night. Fluffy, fluffy, panda, pandy, go to sleep. Bah. If I, I just want to make sure, we need to be out here by 11, right? Is that how it is? <laughs> Fuck it, alright. Um, what's up? What's, what's the deal? I'll just take it out loud. You mean like once we're done? Okay, if I go like 10 or 15 minutes over, will some of you help move the chairs for the raid? Yeah! Oh, fuck it, we can go to 11.30. I just got my work. Y'all wanna go to 11.30? Yeah! I try, but then I thought you should get really sore. <laughs> Richard's very aggressive. <laughs> we were wondering, what has the worst fat I've ever been into? The worst fight? Or weirdest fag. Weirdest fag? <laughs> oh, oh, oh. I thought she said, what's the weirdest fag you've ever been into? And I'm like, okay, first of all, I don't like that. Well, only, you can only say that if you suck your dick and you're a guy. No, uh, the weirdest fag I've ever been into. I have, this is pretty weird, I guess. I have the biggest fucking hard on for 3D comic books. Like, is that random? Like, Richard knows this. I brought them with me to the fucking convention. What? I have 3D Superman comic books in my room. Like, and I put on the little fucking paper glasses, and I, like, I watch Superman. Come oh, on. Yeah. I, when I was a kid, I was obsessed with 3D filmmaking. I saw all the 3D horror films that came out. You know, Friday the 13th, Jaws 3D, your mom's boobs in 3D. I saw it. Sarah Palin's penis in 3D. I've seen it. I wouldn't fuck her penis with Dick Cheney's vagina. Uh, so, here's that. She's like, I have had enough of this panel. Motherfucker. Kidding. I'm just kidding. It's all in fun, people. Just laugh and grab your, grab your genitals. Come on, yeah. All right, I was kind of wondering, you've probably been in this for a while. What's the worst gig you've had, or at least the most entertaining bad one? The worst gig I've ever had? Does it have to be acting? Can it be any gig? Any gig you've had. <laughs> For two years, I worked as an actor in one of those motherfucking haunted houses. <laughs> and like, uh, my position, giggity, was, uh, I was the guy, I was in the jail cell. Uh, don't worry, there was no soap to bend over for. But like, I was in the jail cell and I had this little like, hook thing on my hand that I could make sparks fly with. And it was kind of cool because I would just sit there in the dark and I'd wait for motherfuckers to come by and there was like a little red light right here. And I'd jump into the light and I'd start making the sparks fly and just yelling at people, right? Well, I thought it was a pretty cool job, you know what I mean? Like it paid more than minimum wage, you know, it was kind of fun. I was working in a haunted house and Halloween's my favorite holiday and everything. So I was like, this is cool. But like, um, one year, the second year I was doing it and this fucking frat daddy walks in, probably gay, just saying, this fucking frat daddy walks in and he's like, man, this shit is scary, man, fuck this. And I like jumped out and he was like, oh my god, damn! <laughs> I quit after that. I quit. 
Definitely a bad gig. It was a bad gig. It was fine at first. It got bad. Because that same night, some girl also pissed her pants right in front of me. Yes? First off, I want to thank you for signing the Mithril keychain for my friend. Absolutely. And also, thanks for extending your time with us here. And this is the most awesome panel ever. <laughs> Um, my question is, what is your favorite sex toy? Richard Davis. Good answer! And paddles. Uh. Alright, why don't you try and make you squirm, but I think we crossed that line already. Oh, you never know. And you're welcome to chime in on this, too. Oh, shit. All right. <laughs> what are your tips for a good fellatio? Oh, ancient Chinese secret. <laughs> Richard said ancient Chinese secret. Uh, um, relax. Relax. And... I don't know, like, seriously, if you focus, oh god, I'm like Dr. Ruth up here. Relax, once you relax, if you focus on nothing but giving your partner pleasure, it'll work. It'll happen. Just watch out for the salty explosion in your mouth when you get up. Just saying. Unless you're dating a vegetarian. Hey -o! Yeah. Hey, how's it going? Hey. Uh, so this question is going to be along the line of one of those weird mysteries, like women always go into the bathroom in pairs, why do they do that? Yeah. I've asked all four of my sisters, they keep giving me an answer, a different answer every time. Okay. But one of my buddies, I, went to, I grew up with him, we went to high school together and everything, and then one day out of the blue, and I already saw this coming, he came out of the closet to me and Andy, and yeah. we're like, okay, still come snowboarding on Sunday? Right, 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 no deal, no issue. Yeah. Okay. Well, whenever it goes around. And then when we get back from winter break, he's a completely different person. He's gone the whole fabulous route, developed the list and everything. And we grew up with him. He never had that sort of thing. So I'm just wondering, where does the list come from? It's, it's, it's fucking affected in faith. <laughs> I mean, let's talk about that for a second. Because like Richard and I talked about that. We're like, you know what? Like, part of the reason both of us like each other is because we're not just like, like, I mean, I'm, it's not much of a pejorative, but we're not flaming fairies. Like, here's my thing, like, I like dudes because I like dudes. You know what I mean? Like, I don't want a dude who acts like a princess, you know? I don't want Adam Lambert. I mean, you know, I'm just saying. I'm sorry! He's fat and has acne, and he looks like a woman. I'm sorry, no, great voice, great singing voice! Lady Gaga, yay. All right, so, I think that, I do think I have sort of a armchair philosophical answer for that. I think some guys, they come out, and they think they've got so much to prove to society and the world and everything that they go that fabulous, that fabulous route and they start watching Sex in the City and they start hanging out with all their girlfriends and drinking Cosmo. Because like, they feel they're giving themselves an identity. When I think what they don't understand yet is that your sexuality doesn't define you. You know what I mean? Like you're not defined about who you buy, who you sleep with at night. And that's why there's all the morality bullshit and the government trying to get in our bedrooms is such a bunch of shit. Because that's not who we are as people, you know what I mean? Like, I'm, I'm just saying, you know, like, your buddy likes to suck a dick and you like women. It's, but, but, I don't know, it's always gotten on my nerves too, and I've tried, they're, they can be very entertaining, like, it's entertaining in small doses, yeah, but that's why you watch Project Runway, you know, and like, <laughs> watch Uncle Tim Gun for a while and you're good, yeah, yeah, it's, it's alright. I, but I, I think that's what it is, I think they're trying, I think what your friend is doing is he's, he probably feels alienated from you guys, because whether you accept him or not, he probably assumes in his head that you don't accept him, just automatically. So he's going to go off and be with a bunch of really Nelly friends or whatever, and, and watch Jennifer Lopez videos and stuff, and try to be one of her dancers, and masturbate to Lady Gaga. And that's, you know, that's his business, but I don't... He'll probably... How old is he? 19? 20? Uh, he's 21. 21. Probably by the time he's like 25, it will have chilled out a little. If either that or he'll go down the road with, or he'll become like a circuit club boy and like, and like his life will just be like that. Which I think is kind of sad, but to each their fucking own, man. You know what I mean? But like, I think he'll probably just grow out of it eventually. 
And I think he, if you wanted to, you could talk to him and let him know. I mean, maybe he doesn't know he's supported by you guys. You know what I mean? Right, we, we've told him. To, you told him? We told him to just chill out on it a bit because it's making us feel uncomfortable. But other than that, he can come do whatever he wants. <laughs> See, that right there might might make him feel that there's a, a wall. So if you, I don't know, that's tough. Man. Well, we've never had to deal with it before. We didn't know how to, so we're just like. I think right now, just kind of. Let it be. Let it be what it is. And I know it's annoying and can be even embarrassing sometimes. Let it be what it is. Write it out for a few months. Then if it's still going on, just say, hey, you know, I remember my friend, you know, who, I don't care what your sexuality is, but I kind of miss my friend being who my friend was. I think mean, you could say that, and that wouldn't be stepping on his toes too Yeah, but like you said before, small doses and everything. Yeah. It works fine. Right. But when you're around him all the time and he's on like a disco ball all the time. Yeah. <laughs> it's a good one. I don't know. Give it a little while. It'll probably simmer down. Thank you. Yeah. What's up? What's up? Hey. Yeah. Um. Yeah. Pardon my voice. <laughs> uh, nothing to pardon. Yeah. Okay. Uh, my question is: uh, Have you ever like passed down a role that, and like later when you're a kicking yourself for like not doing it? Um, I, I will say that since I made the decision to step away from anime uh, a couple of months ago and start using my voice like in all the other ways you can do voiceover work, um, I did pass up, and I'm, fe I'm feeling the pain a little bit at this convention, I'm not going to lie, I felt, I, I, I almost said I felt up. <laughs> <laughs> I passed up the, I was invited to audition for Hitalia. And I don't, I, I don't know what I may have been cast as, but I, I think I could have done one of the roles. Um, I, I love accents and all that shit. What? Russia. Russia? Don't, don't, don't. Russia. Yeah, Jerry Joel's Russia, so don't say that. <laughs> France. 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 Sure. Oh. Uh. So yeah, 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 yeah. Again, that's regret. You're gonna feel regret in your career every now and then, of course, sure. Yeah, I, I mean, but I had made a firm decision at the time, giggity firm. Uh, but I made a decision that I'm like, I'm not gonna audition for any more anime. I'm taking myself out of that. And I knew Hitalia was gonna be a huge show. I knew there was gonna be a ton of rad male characters. And I was like, nope, not gonna, not gonna do it. And now, I mean, like, I do see all the love. It's getting in it. Patrick's in it and Jerry's in it. I'm sure it's a lot of fucking fun. But, uh... Again, I'm sticking to my guns, so... But yeah, you do feel regret sometimes about things you pass up. Sure, absolutely. Thank you. What you want? Hey, uh, I just gotta say, it's been really fun. You make it a lot of fun, that's why I like coming here. Like, awesome. you even... You do the panda song, and <laughs> put up with me, the jack-off, who asked you to do Dirty Talking Associate two years in a row, I'm sorry. That's um, alright. I've uh, got a question that's actually worthwhile for you this time. Um, like, what's the greatest, most wonderful, perfect memory of your past, like, in all your being? If there's a mentor staggering down the hallway towards you and you got a bust of Patronus, what do you, what do you think about? You mean like, you mean just like great life experiences? It's or? just kind of the culmination of your life, your being, your memory, what's the, the greatest moment? Oh god, well I mean, here's the thing, like, uh, I think it's like a spiral. And until you die, you're, you keep moving up. Let's go so far. Right. No, 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 totally. I, what I was going to say is I think there are really bright little supernovas on the way up, up the spiral. I think there have been a couple in my life of, of moments where I was just like, oh, holy crap, you know, like this is happening. You know what I mean? And um, I think... Uh, there's three or four that pop into my head. Um, one was like, I used to be with this band, and uh, we were actually handpicked uh, by one of my favorite bands from when I was a teenager to open for them in New Orleans at the House of Blues. And that was just like, oh shit. And, um, and I met them and they were just the nicest bunch of guys. One of them cut Patrick's hair recently, actually, very random. They're a band called My Life with the Thrill Kill Cult, if any of you are invested. All right. So I was in a band and we opened for them. And it was fucking great in New Orleans at the House of Blues. I'm like, is this fucking happening to me? And um, I'll be honest, last year when I saw the line for this panel, <laughs> I was like, this is, un this is unreal, this is surreal. And um, 
uh, when I, <laughs> this is cheese factor, this is so like romantic, oh, wank, 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 wank. but when I picked up Richard from the airport when he'd flown from Tokyo to come live with me, <laughs> like, and I, that day that I picked him up and, and we started moving everything into, into my place, and I was like, oh my god, this is going to be like the first real, healthy, adult, amazing, great relationship. So there's been like career highs and, and, and now like that I'm starting to like manifest all this work in audiobooks and commercials and narrative and e-learning and all that, it's, all this stuff is starting to happen to me at sort of a really fast pace. And it, it's, it's sort of shocking. Sometimes I get nervous and I have to just sit back and, and take a breath. And, uh, or let Richard beat me a little. And, um, <laughs> and, uh, what? No, and, uh, so there's, there's been a lot of it recently. But before that, there was, like, the overcoming the agoraphobia. And there was, you know, like, the first time you have sex, which really was kind of a, a big deal for me. It was kind of cool, even though it was on a waterbed and horrible. And, um, you know, uh, so, but, but recently, it's, it's been things with my career, and, like, the thing with the band, and with Richard, and, and honestly, Every experience I've had at NDK has been um, amazing. In fact, one of the cool things about the fact that I'm an audiobook narrator now, and the fact that I never really thought about doing it before, I can tie into NDK. I don't know how many of you were here when this happened. This was NDK 04, and um, I actually was asked by the staff to do something I'd never done before. They said there's this great Japanese writer named uh, Murakami, and uh, we want to want you to pick up his book of short stories and pick one. And we want you to do a panel where you just read one of his short stories. I mean, translated into English, obviously. Um, and I was like, oh wow! So I'm just gonna and I, I read an entire short story by this guy. He's a brilliant author, by the way. It's from a book called After the Quake. It's a collection of short stories. And uh, yeah, uh, and I read. I, I it was in a room much smaller than this, but I, I read the entire story. And um, it was great. People had this great reaction. And I'm like, wow, oh, that was really fun. And so now, like, <clears throat> but fucking six years later, I'm, I just started doing audiobooks back in March, and I'm now on my eighth one. Like, all of a sudden, people are like, we want this fucking guy to be narrating our books. So it's, it's cool. So this, I'm at a point, actually, right now in my life, it's sort of like, it's hard to believe it's all happening. Yeah. And, and I have to say, like, tomorrow when I leave, it's going to be really weird. Because I'm going to be saying goodbye to a whole lot of things, and I'm going to be saying goodbye to this convention, you know, and like, and then it's and it's moving on to another chapter of my life. So tomorrow is going to be sort of another one of those supernovas. Well, good good sailing. Thank you. Thank you. Absolutely. Yeah. In fact. Yeah. Yeah. Definitely. Definitely. Yeah. Go ahead. Got one quick question. Yeah. What's your favorite hentai series? Uh, um, actually, uh, Bible Black. No. Uh, I was actually in a hentai. Not many people seem to know this. Um, it was a comedic hentai, uh, and I played a character named Perverted Teacher Ben. It was a show called Kecko Common, where I got to voice raping my best friend, Monica Rial. It was cool. No, no. Uh, I don't have a favorite. Actually, Richard has some really dodgy yaoi manga at the house that, like, he started showing me one night and I was like, whoa. Fuck. My boyfriend is a kinky motherfucker. Score. So I don't, I don't have a favorite. I just sort of, you know, cherry pick. Giggity cherry. <laughs> After this really epic career of anime that you've had, um, yep. what do you think of going into now? You said you're in transitional period. Right. Um, I've sort of just decided to focus on basically everything else you can do with your voice except anime dubbing. And, and, but I, as far as what I see happening, I really seem to be getting a lot of... Well, I've been landing a lot of commercials lately. I mean, I've always, you do commercials as an actor, but here lately I've been getting sort of a lot of them, and even like spokes voice spots, you know, and, um, but I don't know, this audio book thing is looking kind of crazy. Like, if, if I just have booked eight in the past like three or four months, 
And the guy that actually <coughs> runs this one company that I do narrative work for, he's like, well, I think you're about to be doing like an ass load of titles for us, so I really hope we build a great relationship with you. I, he didn't say ass load, he's English, they don't say that. Um, uh, but uh, I don't know, I think audiobooks are, for some reason, going to be playing a big part in my future. And I really, I love doing it. But to me, it's like almost the purest form of voiceover. In a way, it's storytelling, and that's what I love. I love telling a story. You know, commercials are fun, and they're fast, and they pay really well. <laughs> but audiobooks are like acting out an epic play in your mind, <laughs> you know, and then just and doing it out loud. So I think that's going to be a big part of my future. Yeah. Good. Hello, staff. Long, long. Okay. Uh, you mentioned with Full Metal Panic that if they ever made a, uh, another set of it, you'd come back. Yeah. If they ever make a second season of Guyver, would you consider the same thing? Yeah, yeah, actually, uh, yeah, absolutely. And, and was really one nice. last time without quite as much sexual direction towards Richard. Yes. Can we get one final Guyver scream? <sighs> All right. How, was it pretty loud last time? It was, it was good. It was good. That, you can do better. I know you can fill this whole room. Talk the nuts. Yes. Crotch <laughs> lifted. Yes. <laughs> The Brits love that show, by the way. Can I tell you something? The dub of Guyver knocked the dub of Full Metal Alchemist out of the number one spot in England. Oh. <laughs> okay, Hi, Chris. Hi. I just, I have a two statements and a question, but... Awesome. The statement is, I, I really appreciate you so much. I've, I've, uh, I've admired you for more than four years, and I had the honor of meeting you last year. Would you remember Anji O N J I? Yeah. And I was so upset that I didn't draw you a picture, and I was I'd be so happy if you uh, <laughs> draw me a picture, and um, I drew you a picture. I'd be happy, so happy if you um, signed it after this. And what? oh my God! Of course I'll sign it. Yeah, yeah. No, I mean I was gonna give you. I'm sorry. And sign something else. And I just want to show tell you how much I appreciate you. Thank you. Okay. I love you. <laughs> <laughs> but, um, and then also, the donation was my second to statement, so I'm just, okay, so, out of all the dubs you've done, um, which one do you, do you regret doing anyone, like, do you regret, um, making one better than you did, like, did you look at it and say, what the hell did I just do, and could you, did you wish you could do it again? One time, um, when the Anime Network used to run on like regular TV, you know, like um, I was at a friend's house. When was that? Like oh five or 06. I was at a friend's house, and we were watching the show. I said, "Wait, stop here! I want to hear this." Because the first show I ever had a lead role in was a show, actually, ironically, about shamanism, uh, and it was called Gasaraki. You know? Wow! And I played, I played, I played Yushiro Goa, and he was the lead character. He was a mech pilot, go fucking figure. And, um, <laughs> but he piloted the mech through like shamanic ritual. It was very interesting. It was a cool show. But I was watching it with my friend, and I was like, <laughs> my friend was like, is that you? I was, I was a lot younger then. <laughs> my first lead role. Shut up. So yeah, I mean, yeah, yeah, yeah. You grow, you grow, and you evolve, and you change as an actor. And I think sometimes you do look back at your old stuff and just fucking cringe. Yeah, but whatever. I still sign Goss Rocky DVDs to this day, so it's kind of amazing. Thanks. Thank you. I'll see you after. Thank you. Okay. Okay. So, um, on the chairs, everybody agreed, right? We sit at thirty minutes to get out. The chairs need to be stacked ten high. Anywhere in the room, and then the con is going to come and scoop the tin chair somewhere into magical nowhere land. So you can wait. <laughs> right? Whatever. Anyway, so ten con. Not eleven. Not nine. Ten. Okay, what I'm going to do, I'm going to take two more questions. 
And then I'm, I'm sorry, I'm gonna take two more questions and then, um, and then I wanna do my little closing ritual and then I wanna bring Wendy up here because we both kinda wanna jointly do something. So I'll take, I'll, I'm sorry, I'm sorry I can't get to everyone. I'm really, 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 really sorry. I feel like shit about it, but we gotta do things for the con. Okay, so, two more questions, go ahead. Hello, Chris. Hello. I have two quickies for you, Giggity. 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 I love quickies. Um, the first one is, has to do with the gaydar. The gaydar. Um, I've had friend, or quite a few friends ask me if I'm gay. Okay. So I just want to ask your opinion. You're gay. It, totally gay. Okay. And the second question, yeah. you know, for whatever reason they ask me, but the second question is, from a scale of 1 to 10, how fuck all in? I'll give you a 69. Woo! Yes! Um, seeing that you're an actor, I was wondering if you believed in like the superstitions of acting, like, you know, saying the fee and stuff happening. I used to. You used to? Um, I, no, I don't. I don't believe in, I don't, uh, I, I don't think there's anything wrong with saying Macbeth. Um, I don't think there's anything wrong with walking under a ladder. Um, I'm a very spiritual person, and I'm, a very, I'm very much into a lot of esoteric shit. But, and I think because I'm into that, it's sort of given me the power to not be afraid of, of the superstitious. Because it's taught me, if anything, believing in a lot of shit that a lot of people think is freaky and evil and crazy, has actually taught me to not be afraid and to live a very purposeful, compassionate, loving life. So, that's how I live life, and I don't worry about the small things like saying Macbeth in the theater. That's it. Thank you. Good question. Okay, so I want to do something. Um, I want to do something before I bring Wendy up here. This is a little cleansing ritual. Uh, it's called cuss therapy. So, what I want you all to do is stand up. And it's very simple. Very, very simple. Very simple. I'm going to count to three. And on the count of three, uh, and don't leave after this, because we're still, I've got to get Wendy up here for something very special. But on the count, this is just so you can clear away all the negative shit that you've encountered over the past, like, month, right? Okay? So on the count of three, you're all going to scream, fuck, as long and loud as you want, okay? All right? We need to practice, because we've all said fuck many times. All right. So, it's really simple. One, two, three. Fuck! Okay, I think I just came a little. All right, so Wendy Powell, Wendy Powell, everybody, Wendy Powell, get up here. I wanted to bring her up here. This is actually kind of her idea, and I, I totally am done. I think it's awesome. It's both of our last NDKs. I mean, yeah, it's my last mom, but it's her last NDK. So she definitely wanted to say some things. Well, mom, look at the on button. Well, oh. Hi. Um, we're kind of in the same place. We're kind of moving on to new chapters, like I said. Um, and I'm going to start to cry. I love you guys so much. We have had the best time here for the last four years. And um, we love you guys so much. And this has been a lot of fun. Not only for us as a group with you, but Pat and I have had a lot of fun together. Because what has happened was, was Mako and have done run out. out. So we, we have had a lot of fun here. And, um, <laughs> we harassed her, sure. We did. Uh, so anyway, it has been a blessing to meet all of you. And I just, it's so weird. I recognize all of your faces. And um, thank you so much for just being part of our lives for four years. It's been really wonderful. Um, I will post on Facebook how much we raised for Blake. You guys were very generous. Thank, thank you so, so, much. so, so much. Um, and I don't know. I'm going to start crying. I'm going to turn it over to him. But I love all of you. And I hope you'll just... You know, just stay in touch. <laughs> um, yeah, when you have. So really, I mean, I can't add too much to that, but it, it is a good point that we both have to to fly away before um, before closing ceremonies. And usually, that's we're always here for that, and we always. We love and we're not years. doing that this time. It's really weird. Which which is weird. Clap it out for me, kids. Yeah. Clap it out. So. But, Closing ceremonies no, it's very ever. It's very powerful. We so love it. okay, so, so this is the end of my, my con career, and this is the last. I I mean I really have nothing to say. Uh, 
that's going to be incredibly deep or meaningful or, or powerful. But I just want to thank you all because, like, I'm fucking freaky and, and I'm filthy and I'm crazy. And But I also really, part of the reason I started doing this panel in the first place is because I like to o open up honest dialogue between like people who are in the industry and people who are fans or whatever you want to call yourselves, however you want to identify. And you people have been so awesome. People have been awesome all over the country and in England and Canada, but you guys are seriously the fucking best. And I want to thank you. And I really do love you guys. Thank you so, so, so much. We hope you enjoyed this special broadcast to Radio DMG, and if you haven't been offended and thrown your iPod, PSP, or computer out the window, we congratulate you. And we tell you to look forward to the next episode of Radio DMG. Thank you, my name is Philip Wesley, I've been your host, and good night. Morning, Maya.